What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Ford Mustang GT Premium Convertible. Huge thank you to Matt Newman over at Coon Sterling Ford here in Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Mustang or any Ford product, I'll be sure to have Matt's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It is a beautiful but breezy day outside here today. The high is gonna be about 68 degrees, so for mid-November, that is absolutely awesome. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Ford Mustang GT Premium Convertible, and this particular one has been painted in vapor blue metallic, which looks awesome on the new Mustangs. I wanted to preface this video by saying, for 2024, the Mustang was redesigned inside and out while still maintaining a sense of familiarity to the S550. And by the way, the GT also gets a nice bump in power as well for 2024. And I also wanted to mention specific to the convertible, you can only get the convertible with the GT Premium. But as standard with the GT Premium Convertible, you get LED headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. I wanted to point out right now it's doing the welcome lighting sequence, but you also do get a mix of black and silver for your headlight bezel. So you can see the backing of the headlight is black, but then these three like U-shaped pieces in there are silver. And if you wanted this to be totally blacked out, you might want to look into getting the optional $1,195 pony packet, night pony package, which which basically gives you uh, a black headlight bezel, black badging up here at the front, black badging on the side, black wheels, so on and so forth. I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about. But taking a step to the left, let's take in the entire front end of the S650. So very similar to the S550, but it looks a little bit more chiseled, a little bit more modern than the S550. And I think they did a great job redesigning it in my personal opinion. But if you wanted to spot a Mustang GT S650 driving down the road, one way to point them out is that with the GT, doesn't matter if it's a GT, GT Premium, GT Premium Convertible, the GTs get this gloss black functional hood vent so you can feel the heat dissipating out of the engine bay. I think that's pretty cool and I like how they made this GT specific. And then coming down just a little bit, you get a gloss black mesh front grille with your Pony logo located at the center of the grille. You may be able to see right there. And then zooming back out, you get two gloss black grille nostrils, both here and here. And you might've just seen there a second ago, you get this grille lighting um, right there and right there. I'll show you on screen what that looks like now. And then I can also, I think, unlock the vehicle from the key fob and they'll turn on as well so you can see those two pieces right there the reason this has these two grill lights is because the nose of the vehicle protrudes out a little bit more than the headlights so at night um, this was mandated by law because the headlights are set back further than the nose quite a bit you have to have these two lights here in the grill so pedestrians can see, so vehicles can see the front end of the vehicle because again, you can see quite a ways out from the headlights. So that is why you have those two lights. And uh, luckily a commenter uh, on a couple of my other videos that I've done with S650s have pointed it out to me and I confirmed it online and that is true. Coming back out, you may be able to see that you do get also uh, a gloss black grill surround and then you also get satin black lower and outer grills as well. But I wanted to point out, um, actually, one thing that's interesting is that with the convertible, both of these are non-functional. However, I've done a video with another S650 GT and this one was functional, so there wasn't that satin black backing plate. So that side was functional on the coupe, but this side was not functional on the coupe. But with the convertible, neither side is functional. So that's a nice little or a, a strange little difference with uh, the convertible as compared to the coupe so very interesting and then coming down a little bit more you get a satin black front lip which is what this piece is here and then coming down the side like I said if you wanted the blacked out look and you're looking for the blacked out look you might want to look into getting the night pony package because you get the black badging you get the black wheels so on and so forth in my opinion if I was going to uh, spec out an s650 GT I would definitely opt for the night pony package but 
coming down the side you can see you get a side marker light here and then these are the standard wheels you get with the GT premium and they are a 19 inch shadow silver painted wheel and they are wrapped in 255 40 Continental Pro Contact RX tires I'll give you a view of the wheel face and then I'll also give you a view of the tread pattern as best that I can down in there and if you are not a fan of these standard wheels there are eight other wheel options to choose from however five of those wheels require certain packages like the bronze accent package or the night pony package or the GT performance package but there are I believe three wheel options that you don't have to get packages for so I just figured I may point that out but also as standard you get four piston Brembo front brakes that is what they look like here at the front and then moving on from there up top here you get your rain sensing wipers you get the 5.0 badging obviously on your two front fenders about right there as you can see and then talking about our side view mirrors you get body color mirror caps and as standard these side view mirrors are heated manual folding you get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then you also get the pony projection lamps which basically at night will project a pony out onto the ground so i can see if i can't pick it up see right there so basically that pony that you see on my hand will project here at night it looks pretty cool it's a nice little gimmick um, that's stuff like that that i personally appreciate but you can see i think that is pretty cool however let's say you wanted the integrated mirror turn signals well you would have to get the gt premium high package which is 2900 bucks in order to get those integrated turn signals but now let's do a little side profile shot of this thing. You can see that this one is the convertible, so it doesn't have the aggressive design language here at the back that you would have gotten with the fastback. You can see it's more of like this, rather the fastback is obviously a fastback design. So the uh, convertible isn't as aggressive looking. However, it does have its own appeal because with the top down, there's really nothing like driving a V8 muscle car with the top down. I mean, if you've driven one, you know what I'm saying, but it just doesn't have the quite the aggressive look that the Fastback has. But you also do get some satin black window trim. You get body color door handles with keyless access. And then all the way at the bottom of your passenger doors, you get these satin black side skirts. They are rather aggressive. So here's a view of what they look like here at the front. And I'll give you another view of what they look like here at the rear as well. That is what they look like. And now, coming around back, you get your capless filler neck. You get a side marker light back here as well. All you got to do is press on that and the filler neck will open up. 87 octane will do you just fine. If you want a little bit more power, I would assume you would put 93 octane in this. I would assume the computer, you know, does its thing and it, when you put the 93 in it, it gives you a little bit more power. I've seen other vehicles that do that. Um, so I would assume this would be the same, but it may not be. I could be talking out my rear end. But anyways, moving on from there, this is a rear three quarter shot of what this thing looks like here at the back. One thing I also wanted to mention is that I've done videos again with other S650 Mustang GTs and they were both coupes but this body color deck lid spoiler on the coupe comes out quite a bit more than what you get with the convertible. You can see the convertible is just the deck lid spoiler on the trunk, whereas on the coupe, you get another couple inches of spoiler. I can put a picture of what it looks like on screen, uh, but yeah, not quite as wide on the convertible with the deck lid spoiler as compared to the coupe with the standard deck lid spoiler. So I'm comparing standard to standard, just something kind of interesting. And then also um, what where the convertible differs from the coupe is that the coupe does not get this thing. I do not like the way that this antenna looks. This kind of reminds me of the S197 Mustangs. Um, so not really a fan of this. So this is what you get with the convertible. The coupe just gets the body color shark fin antenna. Also differing uh, the convertible from the coupe is that you get this third brake light here also on your trunk, whereas on the coupe, it would have been up top there on the fastback. Um, so this, the deck lid spoiler and the antenna are things that differ here um, from the coupe to the convertible. But anyways, um, you still do get LED tail lights back here. And then obviously just beneath your third brake light is where you'll find your backup camera. Then you get your GT badging. And then if you wanted to open up your trunk, just make sure you have your key fob in your pocket. Come underneath here, you'll see this little pad, press on that pad and the trunk will pop open just a little bit. 
And then back in here, obviously, this being a convertible, you get a little bit less storage space vertically um, than you do with the coupe. So just keep that in mind. If this is gonna be your daily and you need as much storage space as possible, the coupe might be the one to get, but if this is gonna be your weekend driver, you don't care about the storage space, well, then the convertible will do you just fine. And then one thing that I also find interesting um, is that with the performance package, you do not get a spare tire, but if you do not get the performance package, you do get a spare tire, and that is what the spare tire looks like down underneath there. And then closing this trunk back up, let's finish things off here at the rear end, shall we? So coming down here, you get a satin black rear valence, you get four integrated parking sensors, you get a dual exhaust system, this is your uh, reverse light down here, and then one must-have option, I've experienced uh, the vehicles without this option versus the ones with this option, and this is a must-have option. I highly, highly recommend this. And that option in question is the $1,225 active valve exhaust system. Uh, it gives you an additional six horsepower and three pound-feet of torque, but it also just has a better tone. It's louder. Um, but if you're gonna be replacing the exhaust anyways with an aftermarket system, then ignore what I just said. But if you're just gonna keep the stock exhaust, I highly recommend the active valve exhaust system. It's got a better tone. It's louder, but it can also be quieter if you want it to. Uh, highly, highly, highly recommend that option. And then with the 10 speed automatic option, you get a 315 limited slip axle. And one thing I thought was really cool is that even though this is a convertible, if you want a tighter, more you know sporty feeling driving experience, you could opt for the $4,995 GT Performance Package, which would give you upgraded brakes, um, some more chassis bracing, uh, a different type of chassis tuning, different wheels, obviously thicker tires and stuff like that. I'll show you everything that you get with that on screen right now. Um, so if you want a tighter, more sporty driving experience, then you can get that package. But again, the one option that I highly recommend you get is the active valve exhaust system. Um, but yeah, with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals that five liter naturally aspirated V8 that makes 480 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. This Mustang's been optioned with the $1,595 10 speed automatic transmission that can propel this thing from zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 15 miles per gallon in the city, 24 miles per gallon on the highway for 18 miles per gallon combined. I wanted to say what is new for 2024 under the hood is this dual throttle body setup that you can hear while you're driving. It sounds awesome with the top down. When you're not giving it too much gas, but you're giving it a little bit of gas, you can hear that all that air being sucked into the 5.0. And then if you give it a little bit more gas, then you hear the exhaust, but you can kind of modulate it where you hear the induction, but then you give it a little bit more, then you can hear the exhaust. So it is really, really cool to hear. It's really cool to feel and just experience while you're driving the convertible. You can also hear it in the coupe as well. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos. So if you've enjoyed this video in any sort of capacity, if you've learned anything from this video, please just take a second, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. The likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. So I'd appreciate it if you would do those three things. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across that little lock button right there. And now the vehicle is locked. Again, all you gotta do, hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. Now I wanna show you a couple of the functions on the key fob as well as what the key fob looks like. Majority of the key fob is satin black. You get the pony on this side. And then starting with the functions at the top, you have your unlock function, then you have your lock function. With the 10 speed, you get the remote start function. Then you have the trunk pop function and your panic function all the way at the bottom. If you wanted to remote start this vehicle, all you would have to do is press the lock button and then press this button twice. Lock, one, two. And that is what you can hear when you're walking up to this thing after going shopping. But now, let's take a look at what the driver's side door panel as well as the rest of the interior has to offer, shall we? So. 
this is what the door panel and the interior looks like so starting with the door panel all of this area right here is leather wrapped it's also nicely padded for your armrest and then the rest of the door panel uh, is basically like a satin black plastic and then this is more like a vinyl material actually from up top here then you get a satin chrome looking door handle you're unlocking your lock functions you get a speaker up top there your power side view mirror controls you get automatic up and down windows in the front but you do not get automatic up or down windows in the back you get a speaker here then you get some storage space at the bottom of the door panel you get this Mustang brushed aluminum door sill, and then you get a partially uh, power adjustable driver's seat. So you get power lumbar and power up, down, forwards, and backwards, but you get a manually reclining function. This is what the seats look like here at the front. One thing I really like about the Mustangs uh, with these seats is that the headrest is adjustable forwards and backwards. So not only does it go up and down, it also goes forwards and backwards and you get a little bit of adjustability in there. They're like six different settings. So that is definitely very nice. And that is something that I appreciate. By the way, with the GT Premium, you get heated and ventilated seats in the front as standard. But now, Stepping on into the interior, you may be able to see what you get uh, with the new Mustangs. I'm going to close that door here first, turn this on, and now you can see you get the digital gauge cluster. You get the entire pretty much digital dash, I should say. But before I get into that kind of stuff, um, I'm going to go throughout these controls down here. So pressing on that button is going to pop open your trunk. Then this is your headlight control knob. So all the way at the top, headlights off. Daytime running lights on, headlights automatic, and then headlights always on at the bottom. I like to leave it in automatic. And then these buttons here are to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. And then coming down just a little bit more, if you push on this, it's gonna pop this open. And this is a great spot you can set your sunglasses. This is your sunglass holder. And it actually has a little sunglass thing on it. But closing that back up, when you flip this thing forward, now that gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you. And then you can also move it up and down until you find your comfortable position. Once you find your comfortable position, which is going to be like right there, then you just lock this back into place. And that is that. Now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And then zooming back out, you get a heated and leather wrapped steering wheel. I love the flat bottom on the bottom of the steering wheel. And then also on the bottom of the steering wheel, you get this faux carbon fiber looking trim, then some satin chrome trim as well. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on the new Mustang. Also, with the 10-speed automatic option, you get these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So downshift on the left, upshift on the right, and it is actually very responsive, especially when you're really getting on it. The shifts are instantaneous when you pull back on the paddle. If you're just kind of pee footing it around, um, then you know when you click it it's a little bit delayed but when you're really getting on it it's they're right there the shifts are right there and i really like that but on the left hand side of the steering wheel these are your cruise control settings if you got the gt premium high package for 2900 bucks you would get adaptive cruise control with stop and go this one has not been optioned with that obviously um and then this is basically to turn your lane keeping system on or off. And then here are your drive mode. Or this is like your drive mode selector rock or switch. So when you click down, it's gonna bring you in between this, but you gotta click it twice to actually shift uh, into a different drive mode. So if I just clicked it once, watch, it's just gonna bring me and let me know which drive mode I'm in, which is normal mode. I'm gonna let that go back into the screen, but if you click it twice, I'm gonna double tap it. It's gonna bring you into your sport mode. And then if you double tap it from there, again, it's gonna bring you to track mode. But once you're in this screen here, you only gotta click it once, see that? But you basically, if you're just on the uh, gauge cluster, you gotta double click it into in order to actually switch into a different um, driving mode. And then one thing that I also like about this vehicle, I'm gonna go into custom mode. You see this, um, steering wheel on the right hand side of the steering wheel like that button when you're in custom mode and you click this this is going to switch you between your steering feel so you get steering feel sport you have uh okay what's well, okay. it's only gonna let me do steering feel sport but basically you have like steering uh, feel sport steering feel normal and maybe steering feels um comfort 
I believe, yes, yeah, steering feel normal, steering feel comfort, and steering feel sport. So when you're in normal mode, excuse me, it, you got the normal, the comfort, and the sport. Basically, when you go into the steering sport, um, once that screen goes away, it's basically going to tighten up the steering feel uh, a little bit. But basically, comfort is going to be the loosest setting. Uh, and then on this side of the steering wheel, you have, uh, this is to speak to the vehicle. This is gonna bring you into your different um, steering feels. Then you have your volume controls, and then this is to go backwards on the track. This is to go forwards on the track. And then uh, these buttons, like the up arrow, the down arrow, these arrows, as well as the OK button are all to control your 12.4 inch digital gauge cluster. So with that said, I wanna go throughout the digital gauge cluster, starting with the drive modes first. So you have your normal mode, you have your sport mode, you have your track mode, you have your drag strip mode, you have your slippery mode, you also have your custom mode as well, and you can see the graphics change dependent on which drive mode you are in. So I think that is pretty cool. Uh, but now let's just go throughout the gauge cluster. So you can see, uh, actually right now, the gauge cluster like display theme is linked to the drive mode. So if you didn't want it to be linked to the drive mode, I'll show you that here in the next few minutes. But basically, this is what normal mode looks like. You got your tachometer on the left, cool and temperature gauge on the left. Then you got your ambient exterior temperature, your speedometer over here digital speedometer readout you got your fuel gauge in your fuel range down here odometer then you got your transmission status stuff down here that's uh, your lane keeping system stuff then you got your um, driver assistance stuff that is your steering feel um, and then this screen right here is basically configurable and then you also have your compass there so if you wanted to change this screen you click right here you can see now we're on trip two click this again then you get your fuel economy stuff then you have your tire pressure stuff. Then you have your gauge detail. It shows you the temperatures uh, and as well as the pressure and the intake air temp. Click this again. You get some more gauge details like the battery voltage, the vacuum, air fuel, stuff like that. Click this one more time. You get the Mustang status stuff and then you get your driver assistant stuff. Um, again, if I went in between my different drive modes, I think if I went here, now I'm gonna go into sport mode and it's going to look different, like the gauge cluster layout is gonna look different. It's basically like displaying similar things, uh, but it's just laid out differently. So you can take a look at that, pause your screen. I'll show you what track mode looks like now. Give it a second. Track mode is less stuff. So you can see, now you just see the less stuff uh, and basically the most important thing, which is the tachometer when you're on the track is at the top, you get a small little speedometer there, and then you can see your tire pressure stuff, uh, and then your temperatures and your pressures and your fluids, then you get your gauge detail stuff, and you can still see all of these different things, it's just a little bit smaller um, to make the tachometer your focal point, which is the most important thing, again, when on the track. Um, and then I'll also show you your drag strip mode, Give it a second. I like how it's doing a burnout on the track. That's a, actually a GT performance package that they show you on that screen. And then it also says track use only down here. Um, you know, that's just forward cover in there, rear end. If you, you know, rip this thing on the street uh, and you crash it. Then you have your slippery mode. I know I got low fuel and uh, basically slippery mode just looks like normal mode. But basically it's going to mess with the, um, it's going to mess with the throttle response. So basically you're not gonna be able to slide this thing off the road as easily as if you were in normal mode or whatever. But then custom mode is configurable to you. So you can make custom mode, obviously custom to you. This is what somebody made their custom mode right now. Uh, but moving on from there, like I said, you get rain sensing wipers as standard, and this is your um, windshield wiper control stock. Now coming over to here, this is your 13.2 inch SYNC 4 infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. And again, this whole screen layout is new for 2024. So this is what the screen looks like. Up top here, you have your home button. So, and then you got your time, you get the ambient exterior temperature. This is what the home screen looks like. You can go in between your different settings over here. You can go into your vehicle settings. This is what your vehicle settings screen looks like. Let's say you don't know like what Windows does. You can click on that and then this is, it basically tells you what each one of these things is. See that? So I think that is pretty cool. And then you can go in between your lighting stuff and you have all of your different vehicle settings throughout here. You can go into the remote start setup. You can see all of that kind of stuff, see what you want it to do when it does remote start the vehicle. So 
it's a very cool system here. Uh, and then you can go into your instrument cluster. You can choose your screens. So you can basically see what you see right over there. So that is that screen there. Then you can go into your connectivity stuff. This vehicle does have a vehicle hotspot on it. Uh, and then, yeah, that's about it for that kind of stuff. And then also over here, you have your different apps like wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You got your different features here as well. So you got your driver assistance features. Let that pop up and I'll walk you through that. So here are all of your different driver assistance features. If you don't know what one does, like the blind spot system, it lets you know and it also gives you a nice little animation there uh, letting you know what the blind spot system does. And it does that again with all those eye buttons. So that's it for that. Uh, but also I did wanna show you this. See how it's like that split screen? You can see your fuel economy stuff and you can also see your trip one, your phone stuff and your audio stuff. And uh, you can also click that over and it's gonna bring the audio stuff throughout the entire screen. Now moving on from there, coming down here, you get heated and ventilated seats as standard. So heated seats, uh, three levels of adjustability, which are what these are here. Three levels of adjustability for your heated seat. Three levels of adjustability for your ventilated seat. I'm gonna turn the climate control system back off because it's gonna mess with the audio and the video. But this is basically your climate control stack on the screen at all times. So this is what you will always see at the bottom of the screen. This is your steering wheel heated button on or off fan speed get your fan speed there one thing i don't like about the new mustang is how the climate controls are throughout the screen you get no physical climate control buttons other than the max front defroster um, so if you wanted the climate control to go throughout this entire screen you'd click this right here with the arrow pointing up and then this is what your climate control screen is going to look like when the uh, climate control system is on one thing that's interesting see on that animation right there it's a manual so the mustang is a manual uh, with the climate control screen but this one is automatic so that's just kind of interesting uh, to see but then backing back out of that click that again that will go right back down and then you also get heated and ventilated front passenger seat obviously as well and that's kind of about it for that screen i guess i could show you um, the carplay stuff so i'll show you what the carplay stuff looks like you go into apps apple carplay and then this is what the carplay screen looks like so if you wanted to make the entire screen you would click that and then the apple carplay is going to take up the majority of the screen so again you just click this button right here and now it's smaller click that button again and it is bigger again it's those two arrows that look like they're pointing in uh opposite directions when you want it to get bigger or vice versa when you want it to be smaller then you get two hvac vents down here this lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off uh, your push button start button this is going to bring you into your mustang mode so you can go in between your different track apps like your acceleration uh, your brake performance your lap timer you also get line lock so if i press that on now line lock is enabled so if i wanted to go into drive and do a burnout i believe what do i do line lock enabled i don't know how to press ok to initialize line lock track app cancel what the heck go into line lock Press hold OK to initialize line lock. Now I'm pressing OK. Firmly apply brake and hold. So now it's engaged for 15 seconds. Press OK. Firmly apply brake and hold. Press OK to engage. Okay, now it's holding. So basically I can do a burnout. See what I'm saying? So that is what that does right there. I think that is pretty cool. Um, and then you also can go back over to here and you got your auxiliary gauges that you can see on screen. I love how it's got that line lock system. I think that is awesome. Uh, and then you can also make your custom mode uh, stuff right here for the characteristics. You can go to your my color. So right now the primary color you can see is orange. If I brought that primary color here over to blue, everything's gonna change over to blue. Um, so see how that stuff is blue. This bottom thing is the same thing. So that is also going to turn everything else blue. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna bring that back over though. Bring that back to what it was, reset. And that is that. You also get some ambient lighting. You can go over to your ambient lighting, mess with the color of that as well. Back, back out of that. Then you can go into your cluster theme. Right now it's matched to the drive mode. So when I switch it into sport mode, it brings it in into the sport gauge cluster. But if you want it to be in the track gauge cluster at all times, no matter which drive mode you are in, you can do that as well. But personally, I like it matched to the drive mode personally. 
Then this is to turn your traction control system on or off. You got your hazard button. This is a configurable button, so it can either be your auto hold feature or your calm screen. So whenever you click that, it could bring you into your auto hold. So basically the vehicle will hold you in place or it could be your calm screen. So configurable button, max defroster, volume control knob. You get a wireless charging pad as standard with the GT Premium. I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max and my phone fits down in that wireless charging pad just barely. Then you get a USB-C port, a USB-A port, and a 12 volt power outlet as well. Again, this one's got the 10 speed automatic transmission. If you wanted to go into manual mode, you pull all the way back. Now I'm in manual mode. Now I can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Then you get the electronic parking brake here. If you wanted the drift brake, then you would have to get to the GT performance package. Two cup holders here, a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrests with some accent colored stitching. And down in here, you get a 12 volt power outlet, but really not that much storage space down in here. And you can also set a pen here as well. Closing that back up, this is what the dash looks like here from the driver's side to the passenger side. You get the tweeters in the A pillars. You get a lockable lower glove box, good amount of storage space down in that glove box. Um, you do get the same kind of uh, adjustability here on the passenger side. It doesn't feel low like you have lumbar support on that side. And then up top here, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror. You get your driver light, your passenger light, both are LED. And then this is the light control. So if you flip that to the left, now that's instant dome light on. To the right is instant dome light off. So now when I open up the doors, the lights will not turn on. But if, when it's flush like this, when I open up the doors, the lights will turn on. But uh, like I said, this one is the convertible. So let's say you're trying to open up the convertible top, but it's not opening up. What you have to do first is pull on this and then twist this to that way. And now I can open up the convertible top and the convertible top will open up. So you can see that is the speed in which the convertible top opens. So now we got that open and airy feel that all of you convertible buyers are looking for. And with the GT Premium, you also get a universal garage door opener. And then opening this up, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. I also like how you get the rear windows. So that's pretty nice as well. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, I would not want to sit in those rear seats personally. Really, for being five foot nine, you can fit back there, but I wouldn't want to be back there for more than like an hour at most. Um, so, really, this is like a two two um, person vehicle. Could put your kids back there, and I think your kids would be okay. But it's pretty tight. So, uh, and if you wanted to close the convertible top, you just press that button there and the convertible top will close. But we're in a convertible, so we might as well leave the top down, shall we? And I might as well show you what it looks like from the outside with the top down. I apologize if there is any wind noise. Uh, not much I can do. I don't have a windsock on the camera because the camera would overheat. But this is what it looks like here from the outside's perspective with the top off. So I just wanted to give you a little walk around. That is what it looks like. I'll go all the way around, give you a view. And that is what it looks like with the top off. Now I'm going to throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at the one option, which is the 10 speed automatic transmission. And you can also take a look at everything that you get as standard. But basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Mustang GT premium convertible is spec is $54,705. I know that is a lot of money, but you get a lot of car for the money. It's very quick, it's very comfortable. Um, and you get heated ventilated seat. I mean, you get you just get everything that you need. If you want it to be a little bit nicer, it's gonna cost you an additional $2,900 for the um, GT Premium High Package. I'll show you everything on screen that you get with that package if that is what you wanted to get. Um, I think that package is worth it if you like a better sound system. But uh, yeah, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here. So, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Mustang GT. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion of the video. Right now I have it in manual mode because that is the only way to drive this thing if you get the 10 speed. But we're gonna go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and then I'm gonna rate this thing on a scale of one to 10. Did well over the first one. See how the throttle or the uh, shift is a little bit delayed um, when you're not really getting on it. 
Tokyo 5. And it's going to get a 7.8 on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, I will say it actually rides very, very nicely, but it also gives you a nice, like, sporty feel while still, like, being able to handle. You know what I mean? There's not too much body roll, but there still is a little bit of body roll. There's also some nice front end grip, although I haven't really ripped this thing. Um, just the, those two little tests right there, it seems like it does nice. Now, obviously, here's a nice little acceleration. to say the active valved exhaust system makes this thing sound so much better um, it's just a little bit too quiet for my taste um, you know without the active valved exhaust system it just doesn't have the tone that I'm looking for uh, and it's just it's not loud enough but one thing about the active valved exhaust system is that it can be loud when you want it to be loud but it can also be subdued when you want it to be subdued and that's what's so good about the active valved exhaust system is that you can make it how you want it to be. So if you want it to be loud, you can make it be loud. If you want it to be quiet, you can make it be quiet as well. And that's why I personally like uh, the active valved exhaust system because it's just, it's exactly what you want it to be. And the tone is better. The tone is better with the active valved exhaust system as well. I honestly almost think um, the active valved exhaust system is better than some of the aftermarket exhaust systems because the aftermarket exhaust systems can be way too loud and they can be just way too like raspy almost in a way. Um, whereas I think Ford got it right with the active valved exhaust system. It just, it's got the right tone to it. It's got the right volume to it. It's not too loud. It's not too quiet. Um, whereas this sounds good. Don't get me wrong. But I know it can sound better because I've done videos with the Mustang GT with the active valved exhaust system and it does make a big difference. Now, I'm gonna compare the coupe to the convertible here real quick uh, and basically say that the obviously the coupe has better sound insulation from the outside world. This thing with the top up cruising down the road is definitely louder inside than the, uh, the, the coupe. Reason being, there's more sound insulation with the coupe. There's less sound insulation with just like this piece of um, carpet or whatever it is. Here. Uh, I know it's not carpet. I just can't remember what it is made out of, but uh, here, just take a listen to what it sounds like cruising at about 60 over some bridge joints. Take a listen to the road and the wind noise. And it's still, it's not too loud in here. I'm not gonna go out and say that it's too loud, um, but it's just a little bit louder than the coupe. And I wanted to point that out if you were cross shopping the uh, coupe with the convertible. Stylistically, I definitely like the way that the fastback looks better than the convertible. However, there's something special about driving something that's a convertible with a V8 or just really any convertible in general. And I never really had appreciation for convertibles because I didn't like the way that they looked until my friend let me drive her Lamborghini Huracan Spider, and that was really what opened up my world to convertibles and that gave me a whole newfound appreciation for convertibles. <laughs> Because it's just, it's a totally different experience than the coupe. Because you get the open top feel, you get more of the engine noise. You can, it's just, it's a totally different experience that 
I never got to experience literally until I think my first convertible was driving the uh, Huracan Spider. So that opened up my world to convertibles and now I have a newfound love and appreciation for convertibles, even if they don't look as good. Um, a convertible would have to be my second sports car. Uh, it couldn't be my only sports car. Now here's another little acceleration. just you tap them just a little bit and they bring you back down to the speed that you want uh, to be at so you don't go to jail <laughs> but uh, if you want better braking feel you want more brake bite then you might want to look into getting the GT performance package because that gives you six piston Brembos up front four piston Brembos in the rear uh, whereas this gets four piston Brembos in the front and you do not get the Brembos in the rear so obviously it's got more brake bite uh, I think it would resist fade better as well you know it's kind of meant to go on track almost in a way but it's really meant for hardcore back roads driving and stuff like that so if i think well i'm gonna preface this by saying um the convertible obviously is never going to be as performance oriented as the coupe so let's just get that out of the way but i do think that it is really really cool that you can still get the gt performance package with the convertible i think that is awesome uh because it just I don't know. I, I just think that it's really cool because you can basically get the performance s stuff that you get with the coupe, but you're in a convertible, so you get the top-down feel, but you're still getting this almost the same, not the same, but very similar handling characteristics to the coupe. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think that is really awesome that you can get the GT Performance Package with the coupe. Obviously, that's going to ride a little bit stiffer than the non-performance pack variant. Um, but if you're looking for performance while still having the top-down feel, then you might want to look into getting the convertible with the GT Performance Package. One thing I also wanted to mention, I already mentioned this, but I'm going to mention that because some people skip to this part of the video, um, is that the only convertible GT you can get is the GT Premium. You cannot get the GT convertible. It's got to be the GT Premium convertible. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, if you didn't know, here's another little minor acceleration going around a turn. I love those kinds of accelerations. You know, the ones where you're not like fully getting on it, but you're getting on it a little bit and you're just feeling it build power. Those are some of my favorite accelerations. You know, I love floor and stuff. Obviously that is awesome, but there's also, you know, a fun like median uh, between flooring it and not flooring it that you can have a lot of fun with without getting in a whole lot of trouble and not, without going super, super fast as well so i love floor or not i love getting on them like that where you're just bringing them up to about 45 5000 rpm uh, and you're just feeling that power build so this thing drives great it's very comfortable i love the convertible top feel and by the way the convertible motors are so quiet like when i couldn't even i was closing it and i was like is this thing even closing and it was just it was that quiet uh, that I couldn't even hear it closing. So very, very quiet uh, convertible motors. I think that is nice. That's a nice touch without hearing like that kind of noise when it's closing. Um, but one thing though, is that let's say you're going about five miles an hour. Even if you're going like five miles an hour, you still cannot open up the top. You have to be totally stopped in order to get the top to open. Um, so that's kind of annoying, but not that big of a deal. But really overall, very fun vehicle to drive. Uh, the convertible top is just it brings you a different driving experience that is a lot of fun uh, and just it's just a totally different experience than the coupe. The, co the coupe is going to be your convertible, uh, your excuse me, your performance oriented variant of the Mustang GT. The convertible is going to be your cruiser. But with that said, that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you learned anything from this video, if you've enjoyed this video in any sort of capacity, please just take a second, give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button the likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the youtube algorithm and that is what helps me grow so i'd appreciate it if you would do those three things but again that is it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace